Hey everyone, my name is Jonathan Zakorski. I am a program manager at Universal Processing, focused specifically on the CNPP program. Thank you all for joining us to run through today's presentation on Yelp. We'll teach you some tips and tricks and strategies to get started and unlock the power of Yelp. Uh, we have Peter Huber with us today, who's a partnership consultant at Yelp, and he'll be giving us the inside scoop. So Peter, if you want to roll into the first slide of the presentation. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Jonathan. So my name is Peter. I work here at Yelp in the partnership division. Specifically, I work with agency partners that have small to medium-sized businesses that are looking to just advance their place on Yelp, whether that's through ads, paid media media, free listings, uh, a consultant with budget of the platform that can really just help out agencies and provide that service where you guys can have one person to talk to one person, email call. Um, they have my cell phone there, you processing. So anything that they need, I, I'm there for them. Want to do stuff like this so that we can help educate the community on how to get the most out of Yelp. We're super fortunate to have you and really grateful that you give us your time this evening. We can roll on to the next slide. I'll introduce the Community Navigator Pilot Program for anyone who doesn't know it. So the Community Navigator Pilot Program is created by the SBA, funded by the SBA in an effort to connect socially disadvantaged small businesses to resources that will help them grow and improve and oftentimes resources that were allocated outside of underserved and the minority business community. So our division of this program is run, administered by the US PAC, which is the United States Pan Asian American Chamber of Commerce. We are a national spoke of this program. So we cover the entire country and we work to help connect minority and underserved businesses to business strategy consulting, marketing consulting, access to capital, and the list goes on. Without further ado, Peter, you can take the floor. So I'll just run through the agenda. What I wanted to go through today is, is really A to Z on how to use Yelp, not only as a business owner, but how consumers typically use the platform. So what I want to start with is what is Yelp and who uses Yelp? Going to obviously some things that are coming up summer of 2023 on Yelp and where do we reach with that? How to improve a listing. So uh, most of you probably are either small business owners, you work for a small business, and these are some tips and tricks on how to just improve a profile through free platform management, free listing management. Um, and then obviously next steps are how to drive more consumer attention, how to start ads on Yelp if you'd like to go that route, and some frequently asked questions that we get from a lot of our agencies and small business owners. If there's any questions at any point as well, feel free to type them in the chat. But mainly if you're unaware of what Yelp does, uh, it connects local consumers with local businesses. And, and that's our motto. We want to connect uh, great local businesses with consumers. So uh, if you look here, obviously Meta with Instagram and Facebook, you can find pictures of pancakes. You can look up um, maybe businesses that, that make pancakes. Google, you can find pancake recipes. What is a pancake? Yelp is connecting you to a pancake place near me. Um, so you have the search bar and then you also have the location bar connecting you with two different things that you can find at a local business in your area that, that makes the service that you're searching for. Um, just some fast facts about Yelp. In terms of the number of unique visitors every month, we have 73 monthly, 73 million current monthly visitors, and 83% of those people make a purchase after visiting the platform. Um, it's extremely high numbers, and, and we have the stats to back those up. And then a lot of those people, over half of them actually make a purchase within 24 hours. And most of those searches, again, a vast majority are actually unbranded. So as we saw in the last slide, people are searching for pancakes near me not a specific name of a pancake shop near me. Um, so that's that's definitely important to keep in mind later. Uh, it's more about the SEO and uh, where the consumer is searching, what type of terms they're searching rather than um, just paying to be at the top of a list or something like that, right? Um, this is being close to your community. Again, uh, Yelp's audience is mostly undecided. Most of these people are deliberate and intentional they're going to Yelp to make a purchase, and they're more of what we like to call the, the bottom of the sales funnel. So they're not necessarily doing research about uh, how to create their own pancakes. They're, they're looking for somewhere they can actually purchase pancakes that day. Um, and over half of those uh, consumers, like, as we stated, uh, spend at a business within uh, 24 hours. So a lot of really high intent consumers go to Yelp for these types of things. Um, this is known as a strong signal intent. So the signal intent of, let's say like a YouTube or a TikTok, uh, Meta, anything like that, uh, that's really the outside of that bullseye. Uh, the consumer intent is to connect with others, maybe show somebody how to make pancake recipes, something like that, watch people creating pancakes, 
uh, and then it goes into a smaller funnel where the intent's not necessarily clear. Maybe they want to find something about a recipe, a lifestyle, a cooking technique. Uh, whereas on Yelp, the intent is to actually create and, and go through with that purchase. So that's why we, we like to think of the, the Yelp platform as the uh, strongest signal intent here. Um, so this is essentially kind of how we're, we're focusing in on uh, these individual businesses and, and how to make purchases on the platform. Again, uh, kind of in line with the, the whole purpose of this meeting, uh, Asian-owned businesses are up 130% year over year in terms of searches. Uh, and you can see other minority-owned communities, small business uh, owners in these minority-owned communities um, also trending up in the past few years. Yelp does a lot of work in these groups to uh, try and help uplift the searches. And not only does that on the local level, but also on the national level as well with different types of campaigns and stuff like that. Um, so this is just kind of a show of, of where we're trying to go, where Yelp is trying to uh, permeate these communities and really uplift everybody. Kind of some idea of what search terms trend uh, different parts of the year and kind of some of the access to that your marketing agencies like Universal Processing have access to. Um, so these are just the top search terms in May of 2023. Um, I know we're now in June, but this is, uh, we're, we're collecting data. And so this is what we have currently. Um, obviously, you can see a lot of different things that are kind of the top. It's very general, but you're looking for those local businesses that do these things. So if you're looking for restaurants near me, you're looking for food, you're looking for breakfast and brunch. All of these great local businesses are going to come up, and that's where the consumers can decide on what to uh, choose from these options. Some of the top markets uh, across the U.S. Just wanted to highlight these for restaurants. I know New York is a huge foodie scene. So uh, it's great to see that New York is number one. I'm also here in New York as well. So um, I'd love to see that, that Yelp represent, representation. Uh, but then there's also a lot of very surprising ones on there. So get into Hawaii and you think people traveling to Hawaii want to get the best local flavor, the best local food or the best local service. And that's why they go to Yelp to uh, make these, these purchases. Again, some of the uh, searches that are trending right now. I wanted to keep this relevant to the types of small businesses that we have here uh, in the SBA and supported by the SBA. So I uh, just wanted to include some of the increases in searches and um, year over year growth that we've seen in them. So where does Yelp reach? And again, if there's any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat here. Um, but where does Yelp reach? Uh, what is the audience and how do we reach that audience? So Yelp's reach, uh, a lot of people might not know this or they, may, they might not be aware of it, but there's actually a lot of different partnerships that we have with uh, different manufacturers like Apple, like uh, Alexa with Amazon, um, any type of Yahoo searches. And we're also in the uh, in-dash navigation of 13 different car brands, which now represent over 50% of new cars sold today. So uh, anytime you're in a car and you're looking up uh, places to eat near me, if you're in one of the 13 car brands that we partnered with, uh, that navigation system is going to show you right there. So a lot of different things that Yelp data is used, not only in the name, but also in the proximity. And that's why it's the, the number one trusted local directory site for businesses. So just to show you how this works with Apple, uh, if you go to Apple Maps, or if even if you go to Siri, uh, every time you speak to Siri, I know she's gonna come up right now because I'm, I'm talking to her. Um, there's going to be Yelp searches in there. So it's going to show you the rating for the business, the name of the business, and then how far away it is from you. So all of these things on the right-hand side here, Palmetto Seafood, Mr. Dragon, um, these are all some great restaurants in San Francisco that uh, Siri is showing you there. And then again, on the Apple Maps on the left-hand side, this is how people can click directly to Yelp from a, a separate platform. So the same thing goes for uh, Alexa, for any of the uh, different car brands that we work with. And then again, if we go to Google, um, just the sheer number of searches and the volume of users, unique users that use Yelp every month. Um, it's actually the number one SEO rated um, result when you're searching for something as general as like Chinese food in this instance. Um, so I actually did this search myself and just pulled up the results here. So uh, Wikipedia is showing you an article on Chinese food. There's some recipes for Chinese cuisines on Google. And then if you actually get to the results of restaurants and local businesses, uh, Yelp is that first organic result. So there's no paid SEO that goes onto Google from Yelp. It's just simply the organic rankings and that's how Yelp is found through Google. So now we've gone over who the audience is and how Yelp reaches that audience. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how to start a listing on Yelp and then how to improve that listing so that consumers can find you. 
Um, so the first thing that you can do is add a business to Yelp. So as a small business owner, um, you can go simply go to the Yelp page and you guys can even do this now if you'd like, but you can go to the page that I have linked here. You can select how to add a business to Yelp. Um, you can go to this, I, I made it from the left to the right hand side here. So if you read uh, add a business, I just did this today. I started Peter's Diner, um, didn't actually make it for real. I just wanted to go through the process so that I could show you guys how easy and how few steps it is. But um, you can go to Yelp for free. You can start with the business name and then you can enter in the business email address. You will have to have an email address to create a listing just so that leads can filter to that email address, but you do not need a website. So when you're going through here, you can select the type of business you are so people can find you. You can enter a phone number so that people can reach you and then you can enter the business address and there you go, you have your Yelp listing. So um, fairly simple and again, it's only six steps here. So uh, feel free to kind of utilize this in creating new business listings um, and making sure that they have all of the proper information filled out. Again, I have a link here, how to add a new business to Yelp. Um, so if you just go to that link afterwards, um, if you don't already have a Yelp listing for your business, that's very simple and quick. Some things, to, some things to note about when you create a free listing. So it will not automatically claim that listing for you. You're simply creating the listing with your name. Um, this means that you can go to that listing once it's Yelp approved and you can claim that listing. So claimed listings actually get four times more views on average on Yelp than non-claimed listings or unclaimed listings. Um, some good things to note about this. Once you see down here, you see the unclaimed section on the bottom left. Um, you can click on the claimed. It says claim this business. Once you hover over it, you just claim that business and it's all already using the same email that you use to create that listing. Um, so it's very simple, just one small piece of the puzzle to get more consumer engagement for a free listing. Um, this is just making sure that, again, there's not uh, there's a second level of security. So not everybody can go creating these businesses. This is a way for you to claim your own, own business, um, make sure that all of those leads and anybody that's trying to contact you can go back uh, through the, the proper channels. So what is a basic Yelp profile? Uh, a couple things about a basic profile. User-generated photos can populate the images and the results. So anybody searching for ice cream, if you tag one of your photos with ice cream, they'll also be able to find that. Um, the hours of operation, location of the business. Um, there's, tr there's no tracking, unfortunately, on the website or phone number, but you can add those in. If you have separate tracking, you can do that on your own. Um, and then you also do not have control over the order or slideshow of the, at the top of the screen. Um, those are just a few things. Everything you see here on the free listing is just included from the uh, business owner perspective, uh, everything needed for a consumer to find you. Um, something to add on top of that is what we call an enhanced listing. Um, I got a couple uh, transitions, the enhanced profiles. So an enhanced profile is a paid profile. A couple of benefits of a paid profile is that the business provides the photos to populate. Uh, you have the order. Uh, the ability to control that slideshow at the top of the screen. You also have a call to action button. So another place where you can direct consumers, whether that's a menu, uh, a number to call, a website, however you'd like to receive those orders if you're a restaurant. Um, and you also don't have any competitor ads. So competitor ads are something we'll talk about a little bit later, but uh, competitors can advertise on your page if you are a similar business. So a couple benefits to the enhanced listing versus the free listing. Um, but again, this is what the, for the enhanced listing gives you. So driving consumer attraction, besides the enhanced listing, a couple different ways to drive consumer attraction and to put yourself in front of more people using Yelp. So the way that Yelp users convert into a consumer or to a somebody who's going to purchase from your restaurant, um, they would go to this Yelp search bar. So I'm searching for um, maybe Chinese food near me. I'm searching for uh, pancakes near me. We stick with that example. Um, they can then see the different profile enhancements that you have on there. They can visit your either website or your ordering system. Yelp also provides an ordering system if you are a restaurant. So you do have that ability for free. And then they can either order pickup or delivery depending on, uh, again, what the restaurant prefers. So that's how the consumer journey goes from the search to the restaurant. It's very, very easy. We can connect the consumer directly with the business itself in a couple different means. So again, with that journey comes ads. So uh, if you go to Yelp, you can search for, again, Chinese food. There's going to be some 
some results at the top of the page called sponsored. Those sponsored ads are uh, small business owners that are using Yelp ads to promote their business more, to get it in front of more consumers who are searching for them. Um, a lot of things you can control about Yelp ads. So they show up above organic search results. They're featured on competitive uh, pages. They're geo-targeted and it's easy to maintain uh, that ad as it goes along. So um, you can control the duration, you can control the, um, the keywords, and, and I'll get into that in a second here. Um, so this is what an ad would look like. You control the way that it looks, the picture, the call to action, and that kind of thing. Um, so just some examples of New York um, sushi when I searched it before. Um, so you can show the sponsored results and that's where those ads are. So the placement is above the search results and competitor profiles in your marketing category. They're category based. So it's somebody looking to make a purchase within that specific category or keyword search. And then they're also geo-targeted. We don't want to be delivering ads if we're in Manhattan to New Jersey or to, to Connecticut um, or even to, to Brooklyn or something like that if it's too far out of that uh, business's range. So that's what we're mainly going to be targeting. And it's fully under under the control of the small business owner. Again, negative keyword targeting. If somebody's searching for pancakes, they're not going to be shown ads for sushi or for Chinese food, something like that. That's another way that Yelp maintains the integrity of that search. Make sure that the consumer is being directed to exactly the type of business that they're looking for. And then again, we saw this with a quick serve Chinese restaurant, uh, getting it down to $2 per order and a five times return on ad spend, um, which is... Uh, I'd be very happy with that. I'm, I'm looking at, um, you know, getting more for those consumers than I'm spending in ads. Uh, that's simply what Yelp is doing. It's connecting people to make those online orders. Um, and that's exactly why we can really target all of those free pay, free things on our listing to make sure that we have all the updated information, make sure the consumer knows exactly what they're coming to our page for. Some other things I know that people have a lot of questions about review management and frequently asked questions. Um, so review management is huge on Yelp. This is is really something that a lot of people struggle with, a lot of small business owners struggle with. I get questions every day about it, so I'm happy to, again, take any questions. If there are any in the chat, feel free to throw them in there. Um, but some, some best practices when operating a small business page, um, making sure that we respond to every review is critical. Uh, everything on a Yelp page is searchable. So everything from top to bottom is going to be used as a organic search engine option. And that's why we should respond to every review. It just gives us more content for the page, more searches uh, that people can find us in. Uh, making sure that you can select your review response intentionally. So is this a consumer that we want to publicly address? Is it something about the restaurant? Is it something about our business that we want to take care of in the public light? Is this maybe a personal experience that this person had one off? It's not very common within our business. Um, that's another thing that we can do by direct messaging the consumer and they can then update the response. So you can see on the right here, this is an example from a business owner side. Do we want to thank them, comment, direct message? Yelp prompts us with these things so that we can uh, address that review head on. Um, keeping your cool when, when responding is great as well. We wanna make sure that we keep this as objective as possible. It's not somebody that is personally attacking you. It's somebody that is uh, having a unique experience at this business. So we wanna make sure that we recognize the fact that this is another person who uh, is just using the platform for what it was designed for to leave a positive review or to leave a negative review. And just to say, hey, I recognize this is the experience you had. Uh, I wanna make it right and potentially um, give them something in return. Say, hey, I." I'd love to have you back and I'd love to make your experience great here the next time you're, you're around. Um, so that goes into number three, which is responding in a timely manner, uh, making sure that it doesn't, there's not years between when this person first writes the review and when we're responding to it. Uh, again, it all goes into the organic search engine formula. So uh, anything that we're putting up there and as much as we're interacting with the page, the more that our page is going to be promoted. Uh, following the easy formula for crafting a review response, I just listed out A through D there. This is all Yelp approved. So this is exactly what we have seen have success in the past. Um, starting by thanking the reviewer about their feedback, maybe highlighting a specific detail from the review, like their name, something they're excited about, or an issue we're working to fix. Maybe it's something we're aware of, maybe it's not. Uh, maybe we can say, hey, thanks for bringing this to my attention. I had no idea. Um, Addressing any of those concerns, obviously taking responsibility if needed, um, sharing your business philosophy, making sure that they know that, uh, hey, maybe if I came back to this business, my experience wouldn't be the same. Um, then if needed, conclude by inviting them back or with a way to continue the conversation offline, like a direct email, phone number. Consumers really value this because they're able to connect with the business owner in a way that they never really have been before. Um, they can message you online and see, hey, this is actually 
the way that this business owner conducts themselves and uh, they can change that review to something positive. Um, now, of course, everything is not always going to be positive. There will be negative reviews, but there's quite a few ways and strategies that we have that Universal Processing has uh, that we can flag these reviews, get them removed for either some type of, of language, uh, something that maybe they didn't have that actual organic experience. Um, and that's things that we can get into on a case by case basis. Um, another reason that, that I'm around here. So the review recommendation software, I'm just going to play it really quick. It's a, a short video, but I'll just read this on the side first. So it's entirely automated. The review recommendation software from something that's recommended to not recommended. It's not something that people are actually looking at. Um, it, it applies the same objective rules to every business treats the number of advertisers and non-advertisers the same. So again, free listings versus paid listings. Um, it also looks for things like unfairly biased reviews, maybe people writing about their competitors. The software looks at the location. So if it's somebody in Arizona writing about somebody in Maryland, um, that's not necessarily going to get recommended in the review section. Reviews that aren't recommended are not, they are accessible to see, they are not included in the business rating. So once a review is not recommended, and no longer is included in that business's star rating. So I'm just going to include. I'm just going to play this video, uh, and we can take a look. Together. When it comes to getting recommendations, certain people's opinions matter more to you than others, right? There's the new neighbor, but he just moved here. The nice lady across the street, but she only eats out once a year. And Sam, your foodie friend next door, who knows all the latest spots. You definitely want to know what he thinks. Millions of people in neighborhoods everywhere trust Yelp for reviews on local businesses. And just like with your neighbor's opinions, not all reviews are created equal. Yelp's recommendation software automatically evaluates all reviews. It's looking for those that may be most useful and reliable from active users. These are recommended reviews. And in fact, most reviews are recommended. Our philosophy is quality over quantity, which is why the rest are not recommended. These are often written by users we don't know enough about, or sometimes they could be unhelpful rants, or we suspect the business owner asked the reviewer to write the review. That's against our policy. To keep things fair and unbiased, we try not to recommend reviews that businesses ask consumers to write. Reviews like these go in the not currently recommended section. You can still see them via a link at the bottom of the business's page, but they don't impact the overall star rating. This helps us create a level playing field for hardworking businesses who rightfully earn their great reputation on Yelp. The software is constantly trying to improve its recommendations as it learns new information from reviews and reviewers. This means its recommendation decisions about any review can change over time. The software does not treat advertisers any differently than non-advertisers. Advertisers do not get preferential treatment and non-advertisers are not penalized. We know that's important to consumers and it makes things fair for all businesses. The recommendation software is just one of the many things that we do to protect consumers and businesses alike. Learn more at trust.yelp.com. When it comes to getting- Right, there we go. Um, so that's exactly kind of what, what is written on the right here. It's showing the recommended versus non-recommended, how reviews get recommended. Of course, it's it's, an important process to make sure that each of the users that are leaving reviews are in fact uh, real users and they've had these real experiences. Um, and that's why some of the reviews that are not recommended get recommended in the future. Um, and again, some that are recommended, maybe not recommended in the future based on the actions of that user. Right, so now we have frequently asked questions. So these are a lot of great questions. I'm gonna highlight a few here. Feel free to, again, put in the chat if you'd like me to go through any more than the ones that are, are currently up here that I can go through. Um, so I'm gonna highlight a couple that I hear quite often that I think are, are good to go over with, um, with some of the information that we've learned here today. Um, so what are the best ways to ask for reviews from customers? Um, of course, Yelp always recommends to not ask or solicit these reviews from customers. The best way is actually to continue, continually provide a great service by adding stickers, uh, Yelp branded materials, linking Yelp on a website, a Facebook page, using a check-in offer, or even putting it on a menu. These are all ways um, for a consumer to leave a review by seeing the Yelp logo, which is fairly recognizable in this day and age. They can see and then also utilize maybe a, a UTM code or a link uh, where they can actually just scan it and go directly to your Yelp page um, to leave that review. Some of the other uh, programs or resources for Yelp specifically designed for supporting minority-owned businesses 
Um, these are, are something that we've been working on in the past three years. So it's great that they're now here, that we have the stats to actually show this, to show how some of these support initiatives are uh, boosting some of our minority owned business owners and um, really seeing an impact from the number of searches, especially in the months that um, are designated for each of these. So it's great to see that a lot of these initiatives have actually helped over the years. So how is there a way that we can optimize our Yelp page for search engines? Whether that's Google or Yelp, uh, we both use different search algorithms, but content, content, and more content is generally the best way that we've seen to increase somebody's organic search engine optimization. So filling out a listing from head to toe with as much information as possible by tagging your photos, uploading more photos, and interacting with consumers, these are all things that are gonna help with the organic search results. Tracking the performance of that Yelp page is something you can do as the business owner as well. So we actually provide a couple different metrics from page visits, leads, and impressions. Uh, you can actually do an experiment yourself if you'd like. If you want to start a new Yelp listing and then fill it out with all the information, you can see those number of impressions go up as people are able to search more along the lines of what your business is creating the service that they're providing. Are there any strategies that we can use to increase our consumer engagement? Um, always comes through a couple of things. It goes back to the ads, profile, products, services, or menu. But again, coming to you with uh, more content, coming to a consumer with as much content information about the business as possible is always going to be the most important thing. So what we really want to focus on is updating the listing regularly. I generally say about once a month, just going in. And even if it's something as simple as updating your hours, maybe adding a new service, um, Yelp is constantly changing as a platform. So there's a lot of ways that uh, new services are added, maybe very specific services. Um, again, in the last year, we've had the ability to add minority owner uh, businesses as one of the services. So that's something that you can go in and update. Um, again, I always recommend just once a month going in there, making sure that everything looks good. I would say the best way to handle situations where our competitors are posting false reviews, I've heard this one quite a bit. The best way that I've found is actually flagging those reviews through the, the same process that everybody uses. So you can go to, as a business owner, you can go to that review. There's a little flag where you can mark it and then utilize a couple different strategies that are available through the, the flow. So you'll flag that review and it'll give you some prompted answers. Uh, I always recommend going through that so that a moderator on Yelp side can go through and make sure that this flag is uh, indeed fair, and then that review could potentially get removed. And so that's generally how Yelp uh, responds to these situations and how you as a business owner can protect yourself. Now, how does Yelp differ from other review sites like TripAdvisor? Uh, Yelp is a larger search engine overall. So Yelp is connecting people with great local small businesses, whereas TripAdvisor is more of a travel uh, site. So not only does Yelp have 18 million more monthly searches, but first and foremost, it is that local business directory. So you're able to search using the algorithm for um, different key terms and find those great local businesses around you. That's that's really the, the main questions that I get asked most often. Again, feel free to, to type any in the chat here though. I'm, I'm happy to stick around and uh, talk individually about questions that uh, you guys might have as small business owners. Thank you for that, Peter. It's really amazing to see all of the work that Yelp does behind the scenes. And one thing that really stuck out to me was the in-dash presence that you guys now have with all the car partners. You know, of course, like living in New York and, and being, you know, somewhat of a foodie, I'm always hitting Google or whatever it is, search engine before I go anywhere, right? And seeing that Yelp shows up right there, right underneath the sponsored ads, um, it just, you know, speaks volumes to how important it is for these businesses to have a, a strong Yelp presence and the importance of being active on Yelp as an owner, responding to those positive reviews, those negative reviews, and just kind of giving a voice to your business on the digital front. I hope you folks that joined us today were able to take away some useful um, tips and tricks from this. I certainly did. And if you want more, Peter will be with us at an in-person event, Flushing Queens at the Glow Cultural Center on June 26th from 2 to 4 p.m. And if you're interested in that, or if you have any questions on how to get started with Yelp, anything Yelp related, anything um, marketing related, our CMPP team at Universal Processing is more than happy to help out. Shoot us an email at cmpp at universalprocessing.com or give us a call. We can certainly help you with your marketing presence, particularly related to Yelp. All of that is completely free. 
we're working with Peter and we can advise you on the best strategies to make sure that your business has the strongest presence. Really appreciate you all taking the time to join us tonight. Feel free to reach out to uh, the CMPB team at Universal Processing if you have any questions. Yeah, thank you, Jonathan. I really appreciate your guys' effort in this as well. I uh, appreciate the time and all of this knowledge is just swirling around me all day. So I'm glad I'm able to share it with small business owners. Thank you so much, Peter. All right, take care and we will see you all hopefully uh, in Flushing on the 26th.